My house, my house roof is leaking, everything is a mess. Guys, I can't wait to leave this university environment, I'm tired. Me? I have left in my mind already, you know why. Because my father's business is waiting for me. I'm working towards my masters in one of the best universities in Canada, I will soon let the dog out of the bag as soon as it clicks. Come again, is it the dog out of the bag or the bag out of the, sorry? I said the dog out of the bag. That is not how they say it, you will say the dog out of the, sorry. How do you say it? Is the cat out of the bag? No wait, is it correct? Yes. Actually, it's the cat out of the bag. Look at this guy, you need to leave this school. But wait, are you not coming back for your youth service? Well, home would be home, I will come for my youth service and then join oil and gas industry afterwards. Wow. David what about you? What's your plan after school? You know I'm not as fortunate as you guys, I just pray I will be able to maintain my two. One, so that I will able to get a better job opportunity in the labor market and earn, I'm the hope of my family. Daniel, you don't know the extent to which some of us envy you, your brain. Please tell him. With second class upper in economics, I tell you, the sky is not your limit at all, as a matter of fact, you can get a better job even in the midst of scarce job opportunities. Well, I am actually very hopeful, really, and that's one of the reasons I'm also exploring the opportunity of being an entrepreneur. Daniel, your girlfriend is here, she is coming. Hi guys. Hi. You are welcome my love, please can you wait for me inside. I will be with you shortly. Okay, dear. Mr. Daniel Gabriel. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, we cannot employ you. But sir, why sir? But you said that I... Yes, you performed better than everybody. You are intelligent indeed. We know you are very intelligent, unlike every other graduate who cannot even defend their certificates. But the decision of whom to choose is ours and we didn't chose you. But sir... Why? Well, the MD had initially picked you and your letter was typed. It was this morning he reversed it. I don't owe you all these explanations. Mr. Daniel Gabriel, please leave my office. But sir please, if there is anything you can still do about it. Leave my office. Sir, I, I, please if you can just help. Leave my office, there is nothing I can do. I am sorry, I don't think we can continue in this relationship. But I can continue. You can if you choose to, but I can't, I am fed up. But Joyce, no condition is permanent and that includes my joblessness and cashlessness. You see, I know what I am supposed to be doing for you, it's just that the money hasn't come in yet. Just give me a little time Joyce, I am begging you, just a little more time please. I actually left you six months ago. Your time has been up six months ago, I have moved on, just that I didn't tell you. Joyce, so you left your husband inside. Good afternoon Ma. So this riffraff is here again. Joyce, you mean you are married? She actually meant my boyfriend, we are planning our wedding. Planning your wedding? Hi Daniel. Fernand. Is it Fernand? Does it look like his twin brother or his ghost? Daniel, how are you? You were expecting me to say I'm fine when you were dating my girlfriend. My fiancé. When you know that she was all I had on campus even till now, Fernand. Point of correction, till six months ago when we met. Sorry friend, we met and we fell in love with each other. She actually told me she was done with you. So you think that gives you the right to take her away from me after you know that's what I had in my life, from campus to now, Fernand. The party is over. Mom, take care of your guest. Babe, let's go. Yeah. Let this be the last time I will see you here. Stay away from my daughter and even from this house. Please leave. Okay. Get out of this company. Your BSc in economics is useless here. You are fired. I can't marry you. You're just a riffraff. Good for nothing. I am sorry, I can't employ you, leave my office.
So this riffraff is here again. <laughs> Mr. Daniel, what is the problem? What is the matter? Please open this door now, what is the problem? Open the door. Oh my goodness, this is Daniel selling fuel. Yes, of course. So you know he works here? Yes. Why did you bring me here? I just want you to know that you really made the right choice by marrying me. And as a matter of fact, I don't think we need to discuss this further, dear. Fernand, how are you? Give fuel for $30. Joyce, how are you? Please, Mr. Man, can you sell my fuel before trying to get familiar with your customers? You can keep the change. Mr. Daniel, since that guy that brought Jeep bought fuel and left, you have not been okay. That guy was my friend and the girl was my girlfriend, somebody that I wanted to marry. Okay. He was my roommate in the university, I studied economics, the guy studied banking and finance and the lady studied accounting. In short, your friend snatched away your fiancé, what a wicked world, Daniel, you will be alright. The rich man snatched away the poor man's wife, Mr. Daniel, we are still here together, whether it is two or three years now, what I know for sure is that you will be alright. I dated my wife for four years before we got married, don't worry you'll be alright, let me go back to my duty post. I have no hope, nothing is left for me, I will just hang myself, I will kill myself. My life is fragile, imagine, some people will just commit suicide some minutes to their success in life. After their death, that letter of joy, the letter of good employment with a fat salary will arrive, but they are dead and gone, it happened to a man, I mean in the city. He was jobless for years, he really suffered, three days after he committed suicide, the letter of employment from an international organization arrived his address. Who is talking? I am the only one in the house. Instead of committing suicide, why don't you endure a little longer? You are right, I think the advice should be, why don't you seek solution to your problem? Some challenges in life are not ordinary, if you kill yourself now, your letter of joy will arrive. But you will be burning in hell for taking the life God gave to you. Who is there? Daniel, I have not recovered since the day I saw you as a petrol attendant. Is that what this meeting is all about? I am sorry for that statement, but my conscience is picking me for having abandoned you for your friend. Is that why you brought me here? I built my life around you Joyce, we were best friends, we walked together. <laughs> we studied together. We ate together. <laughs> and we slept together. <laughs> we discussed our future together gazing at the stars in the deep of the night in the heavenlies. We discussed our future. We discussed our future careers together, we discussed our families together. Joyce, we discussed our old age, we discussed where to live in the future, we fought, we quarreled, we settled without any intermediary. I saw you with that girl around your hostel, I saw you again with her in your department, I even saw the two of you in my dream. And you are telling me that there is nothing between the two of you. Joyce please stop this. Stop that, I don't know who you are talking about for God's sake, can't you just believe me for the first time? Have I done that before? Have you seen me with a girl before? For God's sake, please stop that. Believe my foot. I said stop this rubbish, what's the meaning of all of these? You too stop it. My friend get out of my house. What? I said get out, you think I'm joking, I said get out of this place, get out. Are you done? Joyce. I should get out. 
I'm sorry. Let's talk about this. You see, I don't know who you are talking about and you even said you saw her in your dream. How do I know that? I am sorry. Please say you forgive me. Okay, fine. I have forgiven you. We understood each other. You were my friend. We almost discussed when to die. But suddenly, you abandoned me for my friend. You abandoned me for somebody better than me. But Joyce, I cannot blame you and the reason is because, if you choose to marry me in this my present condition, you will be signing a life warrant with poverty, and so I don't blame you. I am sorry for what has happened, I'm sorry, but I want to help you, here is the check of $2000 to start any business of your choice. Daniel, you discussed a lot of business ideas with me when we were in school, have it. Joyce, keep your check. I have been in this condition for more than five years and I believe I can still push it further, I have done five menial jobs. The petrol attendant is the sixth one, I even got fired as a gate man, Joyce, I know I'm going to be fine, please keep your money. In fact say me well to your husband, thank you so much, say me well to your husband. Daniel. It's alright, thank you so much. I just want to help. Thank you. Why is this car not starting? What will I do? My brother, how are you? Please can you help me with this car? Please. I am sorry sir. I am actually exhausted for the day. I need to quickly get home. I am sorry please. Please, if the car works, I will drop you anywhere you want to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jones. I'm Daniel. Pleased to meet you. Yes sir. I don't know how soon you will be dropping off. So please, I will like to share a word or two with you. Okay. That's not a problem sir. Excuse me sir. Let me pick this call. Hello. But I have closed for the day, and the MD is aware of my shift. Yes, why does he want me back in the office again? Alright. I will be coming back now, okay. Excuse me sir. They just call me back in the office. I would have really loved to listen to what you wanted to share with me. I'm so sorry sir please. It's alright, no problem, here, take this tracts, ensure you read them, I'm sure you will be blessed. Alright sir, bye sir. Open your mouth and thank the name of the Lord, we should thank him for bringing us back safely, let us appreciate him, let us thank God for everyone we were able to give tracts to today. Father we thank you for those who we have given the tracts, we ask that you bless them for receiving it. Lord, everyone that got a tract today, Holy Spirit convict every one of them, as they read the tract tonight, the Holy Spirit will convict them, the power of conviction will convict them. As they read the tracts, Lord convict them, let the spirit of conviction come upon them in the name of Jesus. Let your conviction come upon them. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Amen. We are going to rebuke every hand of Satan over their heart, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we prayed. We are going to pray that God should give us their souls, as many that read the tracts, Lord we ask that you give us their souls in the name of Jesus. Father, give us their souls in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we prayed, if they did not read the tracts, how can their souls be one? We are going to pray that the Lord should ensure that they read the tracts. Let the Spirit of God move them to read the tracts. Let us begin to pray. Father Lord we pray that you give them the Spirit of God, to be able to read the tracts in the name of Jesus. I think I remember this face, yes. I have been looking at your face too, I remember you but I don't know where we've met. You gave me some tracts. My brother, I have given tracts to so many people. I helped you to push your car to start. That still doesn't help me my dear, many people have helped me to push this car to start. There was a day you gave me a ride and on the way my phone rang and you gave me some tracts in replacement of the conversation we could not have. Yes. Now I remember your face, how are you? I'm very fine sir. We need to talk. Get inside the car. So my brother were you able to go through the tracts? Yes I did. I read through them, but in the middle of the night, I woke up and those things I read in the tracts kept on coming to my mind. 
I took them and read through them again. The next thing I knew was that I was in tears and I began praying the sinner's prayers at the back of the tracts. Unfortunately, I couldn't reach you because there was no phone number at the back of the tracts except PO and email address. That's true. I'm changed. Thank you Jesus, that is very wonderful my brother, I would have loved us to talk deeper about this issue but you are at your job now, so what we will do, just put in your phone number for me here on my phone, so just call me. Okay, I will call you. When you call, we will fix an appointment to talk deeper into this issue. My name is Daniel, thank you so much sir. You are welcome my brother. Alright. Mr. Daniel. Well done sir. You have a letter. It is as directed by the district manager. You are fired. Sir. Your complete salary for the month will be paid notwithstanding. But sir, what is my offense? What have I done wrong sir? I know you have his phone number. Please call him. But sir, this job is the only thing I have to sustain myself. Mr. Daniel. I don't know the way to sympathize with you. Please I am sorry. But manager. Excuse me. What kind of thing is this now? Jesus loves you my brother, my sister, mummies and daddies. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. With second class in economics, it's as if the only kind of job I can get are these kind of jobs where I would eventually be sacked. I have been sacked as a newspaper vendor. As a waiter in an eatery, I have been sacked as a gateman, I have been sacked as a private lesson teacher, now I just got sacked as a filling station attendant. It is well, Brother Daniel. Sir. I think you need to seek the face of God for the secret behind all these oppressions and afflictions you are passing through. But sir, I thought now that I have given my life to Christ, that I'm now born again, things will get better. I have read through the whole New Testament, as a matter of fact, I am in the choir in the church, Bible study is my best time, why? Because I want to know God deeply. Well, that you are saved is just the first step in dealing with satanic negative influences in case there is any in your life. It is just the first step. Sin strengthens curses and satanic spells, but after salvation, one still has to stand in the place of prayer to deal with this satanic influence. Satanic curses don't break automatically after conversion, no, but the believer is empowered to stand against them and destroy them. Okay. I sense that what you are going through is beyond what the mere eyes can see, you have to ask God to reveal the secret behind it to you, so that you don't keep fighting battles you don't know about. However, I hope there is no one you need to deliberately forgive. Well, just the lady and the guy the first told you about, I mean, Fernand and Joyce. Okay. You need to forgive them genuinely from your heart, that is even a sign of your genuine conversion, unforgiveness hinders prayers and it hampers complete deliverance. I don't have a choice. Alright, so go and work on that okay, let me get going, it is well. Thank you sir. Please, before you go, help me to push the car. No problem. Lord, reveal the secret of the battle of my life to me, O oh God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father show me. Open my eyes by your mercy into the realm of the spirit that I might see why I am going through what I am presently going through. Father I am tired, I'm asking O oh God by your mercy, you come to my rescue, O oh God, and show me O oh God, let me see why this affliction has lingered in my life. Let me see O oh God why this oppression is lingering in my life, let me see O oh God why this suffering is lingering in my life, Father by your mercy, open my ears to hear into the realm of the spirit. By your mercy, open my eyes to see into the realm of the Spirit of God, that my eyes will see O God, why I am suffering like this. By your mercy, show me the secret behind this affliction, show me O God the secret behind this suffering, show me the secret behind this battle of my life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Lord take me up in the realm of the Spirit and open my eyes God, by your mercy, open my eyes and reveal the secret of the battle of my life. Father I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, show it O God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I pray to you Lord, show me in the mighty name of Jesus. In response to your prayers, I was sent to show you what is behind the afflictions and sorrows of your life, what you are about to see happened at 28 years ago, when you were just 10 years old. Take a look. Daniel, son of Gabriel, you did not offend me but your father did, and you are his hope, 
we have come to render him hopeless because it shall not be well with you. You shall labor like an elephant and shall eat like an ant, you shall be unable to gather resources to take care of yourself, even if you are educated in life, your certificate shall not feed you. Because I put the mark of rejection on you, you shall be rejected by men, by women, by the young and the old. I am not hopeless because Christ in me is the hope of glory, it is written, Say to the righteous, it shall be well with him and he shall eat the fruit of the land. My hands shall gather wealth, it is written, I am accepted in the beloved, therefore, everywhere I go, I shall be accepted, I clean off my life every mark of rejection in the name of Jesus. Men, women, the young and the old shall accept me, my certificate shall be useful. Daniel, neither you nor your parents offended me, I am angry with you because of your story, therefore, from today onward, let the brightness of your story go dim. Let your sun set suddenly, I tied your destiny with that of snails, your life shall go slowly, where your mates have money to spend you will be spending complaints. You are lying, it is written, who commands and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not said it. Every enchantment against my life, every divination against my destiny, perish and expire today, it is written, I shall arise and shine for my light has come and the glory of the Lord is rising upon me, my glory must shine. My light must shine, I am of the family of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, in our family we don't go slowly, we run, we fly, we dominate, I shall succeed in the name of Jesus. Daniel, the son of Gabriel, you did not offend me and I do not even know you, it was the gods, the wizard from your father's house and the goddess, the witch from your mother's house that sent for me. They have asked me to shoot an evil arrow to your life, because of this, the day that the termite hits the tree it wings must give way, let every good things in your life give way today. Just as the basket cannot hold water, your life will be unable to retain anything good, that includes money. Wife, children and other good things of life, come rain, come shine, the rock is never void of fire, your life will never be void of suffering, calamities and disappointment, just as the dump site does not attract anything good. Your life will not attract anything good. It is written, he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Every good things that the enemy has used evil words to take away from me, come back to me now, my prosperity, my wife, my children, my divine helpers, my house, my glory, all of you come back in the name of Jesus, my life will retain good things, for it is written, the profit of the earth is for all. My life make profit in the name of Jesus, I shall prosper in this world in the name of Jesus. Congratulations Daniel, these evil people are still alive and there is still one object of cruelty they still use to tie you down, by the virtue of your new birth, you have the power to destroy it. Pray this prayer point, you will call the name of Jesus, by the unity of the Godhead, I disband and I disunite every satanic unity against my life. I disband and disunite every satanic unity against my life. Let them by their hands destroy what they have set up against me in the name of Jesus. Let them by their hands destroy what they have set up against me in the name of Jesus. Everything you have done against my destiny, in the name of Jesus, let the conspiracy of the enemy be shattered, Lord I raise them against themselves in the name of Jesus. Let them arise from the south, the west, the east, and the north, let them fight themselves in the name of Jesus. Every conspiracy of evil against my life, be shattered in the name of Jesus. It's a dream. Father in the name of Jesus, I destroy the plans of the enemy against my life and my destiny. I disband every conspiracy of the power of darkness against my life and against my destiny in the name of Jesus. Justin, why is it that you are so full of yourself? Yes, what will you do? You are disrespecting me even after knowing that I am older than you in all ways. How old are you? That is the problem with you, you are so proud of yourself, what have you achieved in life that no one has achieved before? You are so disrespectful. Justin and Mr. Fred, what is the problem? My son came to call me that the two of you are arguing over only God knows that, what is it? Paula, you better warn him because I could turn him to a madman in a second. You will make me mad. You are a bastard if you don't make me mad. This ingrate called me a bastard, me bastard. Me, an ingrate, you want to start boasting about your good deed. In fact, our relationship ends today, I will be back in a moment. 
You better warn him very well. Please take it easy. One of the things that is tying us together is the case of Daniel Gabriel. By the time I break it, that is when you will realize that an end has come to our relationship. I will break it. There is nothing the two of you can do. I will break it. I am sure you are under a spell. You have been bewitched, if you dare break it. I will tell you that, you said I am under a spell. I will tell you that it is true that I have been bewitched, I will break it and there is nothing you can do. Daniel Gabriel, I, Fred, lose your glory today. Fred, what have you done? Hello, this is Mr. Danny on the line, no, I am not in the office, I came to check on my mother in her house, are you at the office? I don't like what you guys are doing, by now the advert should have been in the newspaper, the MD is not happy at all, yes, he specifically requested for second class upper division in economics. The ones you sent to us, they all failed the test, they could barely write a business plan without incoherent statement and locked up business ideas, you have not done well at all as a recruitment agency. I have to go, see? That office entails so many benefits, and anybody that is going to sit on that seat in that office should be someone that is sound, should be good, not the guys you sent to me. No hard feelings, I have to go now. Excuse me sir. I am qualified for the job sir. I have BSc in economics with second class upper division sir. You mean you teach children? Yes sir. I believe that doing something small is better than doing nothing at all. I overheard your conversation sir. Okay, what are the important elements of a good business plan? Market analysis, competitive analysis, market plan and sales strategy among several sir. Okay, and what are the three reasons why money is to be held? Their basic reason why money should be held. We have precautionary purpose, we have transactional purpose and there's also speculative purpose sir. Well, okay, why do you think you are better in business management than someone that study business administration? That's very simple sir. We live in a word of scarce resources. As an economist, I understand you need to set the scale of preference and allocate resources according to their importance. I also understand the dynamism of the four factors of production sir. Obviously you are better than those I have interviewed for a few weeks. Thank you sir. I think I need to do this. You will have to find your way to this location, find your way to this office tomorrow, I will call the MD and tell him I have found his man. But sir, I can resume today sir. No, resume tomorrow, it's just for you to be there tomorrow. Okay sir, thank you. You pick up your job tomorrow plus a three bedroom flat, a car and a fat paycheck. Thank you so much sir. You are welcome. Let me ask this, where have you worked before? I mean your job experience. Well, I have done some jobs in the past, about five jobs sir. In short, you don't have the job experience. Not in line with. Sorry. Even without your job experience, come tomorrow and pick your job. Thank you so much. Brother Daniel. Well done sir. My brother, how are you? I am fine sir. How are you my sister? I'm very fine sir. Why are you outside sir? My brother, it is the same car problem, when I look at your life, your story is a proof that there is no life that God cannot change. I am so happy for you. Thank you so much sir. You see, I am a modern day Jabez. The Lord has indeed enlarged my coast and things are better now. Wonderful. Is this the lady you are talking about? Yes sir. Nice to meet you my sister. Thank you sir. You can go in and have a talk with her. Okay. I am going to surprise him with the new battery I bought for him. Brother Daniel, what miracle have you performed there to make the car start? I have always known that this is one of the problem of the vehicle. We will do other things we need to do and I want to assure you, a bigger thing is coming. I have also made a commitment that I will be supporting your missionary work every month, and by the grace of God I have also planned to put your children on scholarship. Thank you so much, thank you Jesus, my father, so it is true that there is no one you forget, thank you Lord. Daniel, thank you so much, God bless you. Mr. Richard, you said the owner of those proposal are around, Mr. and Mrs. Vince, let them in. Mr. and Mrs. Vince, please have your seat. You bidded for a business contract worth of $40,000 and you want our company to supply 70% of the fund, 
Well we as a matter of principle, we only supply 60% of the funds not 70%. But as I retrieved your proposal, I saw the need for us to rework the sharing formula. You will still need to rework on this sharing formula, it is a good proposal. Danny, sorry, Mr. Daniel Gabriel, please forgive me, I am sorry for all I did to our friendship. Let's forget the past, I have long forgiven you guys, since I came in contact with Jesus who also forgave my sins. Really Joyce, I don't have anything against the two of you at all, maybe we should just say that, why don't you try to do business with me instead of trying to get familiar with your client-to-be? Now say these prayers after me. Your word says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Heavenly Father, according to your word in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13, I declare that I am the head and not the tail. I break every chain of backwardness and stagnation in my life. I decree that I am moving forward by the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Your word says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Lord, your word in Isaiah, chapter 54, Verse 17, assures me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Therefore, I stand against every force of darkness that has made a covenant of failure with my life. I cancel every demonic agreement and declare victory in Jesus' name. Your word says in the book of Psalm, chapter 35, verse 26. May all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and disgrace. O oh God! According to Psalm, chapter 35, verse 26. I ask you to arise and cause confusion in the camp of my enemies. Let those who plot against me be put to shame and disgrace. Scatter them and turn them against each other, in Jesus' name. Your word says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. Father, your word in Joel, chapter 2, verse 25, promises restoration. I reclaim my lost and buried glory. Everything that the enemy has stolen from me, I recover it sevenfold in Jesus' name. Restore to me the years that the locusts have eaten, Lord. Your word says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17. But no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. As from today, according to Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17, all the negative words spoken over my life are turned into blessings in Jesus' name. I declare that I am blessed, favored, and prosperous. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. By the authority of God's word, I declare victory over every form of backwardness, stagnation, and forces of darkness in my life. I stand firm in the promises of God and claim my blessings and restoration in Jesus' name. Is anyone there? Anyone there? Auntie Sarah, I'm here. Beatrice, thank you so much. Please I don't know what's happening here. Can you help me open this door? I need to get out of here. I'm sorry Auntie Sarah, Dad went out with the key. What? Went out with the key. Locked me in and took my room keys along with him. Please help me check out for the spare key. He also gave strict instructions that nobody should open the door except he says otherwise. Why is daddy doing this? No problem. No problem at all. So I've suddenly become a stranger in my own home. There is no problem. He can lock me in for all I care. He can never stop me from marrying the man of my choice. But why is daddy doing this? I need to get out of here. Auntie Sarah you know, I would have helped if I had the power, but I can only pray for you. So good to have you in church today, Comrade Johnson. 
It's so good to see you too. You have really changed the face of this place. Thanks to donations and contributions from people like you. So, to what do we owe this visit, comrade? Reverend, I have come to see you for something very, very important. I hope all is well. How is your daughter Sarah? She is the reason why I am here. I had to lock her in the room. Is everything okay with her? Everything is not okay with her. In fact, nothing is okay with her. As a good father, I have done all I should. I have done my best, but do you know? She seems not to appreciate all my efforts on her. Reverend, with all my influence and affluence in this country and beyond, my only daughter should marry someone that can catch up with our status. Don't you think so? Not a riffraff with that background. Reverend, I know my daughter respects you a lot. I want you to help me talk some sense into her. And before I forget, Reverend, I learned that the church needs expansion. I brought this $10,000 to support you in the church. It's inside that suitcase. But comrade, do you really have to do this? Reverend, this has nothing to do with you helping me to convince my daughter. I just did this for the work of the ministry. But the last I checked, you recently supported the church building project some months ago and we appreciate it. But we've not even thanked you enough and now this. Reverend, you know as politicians, we do not have time to attend church services, so we need to send our money to attend church services for us, and that is why I brought this. If we can maintain this relationship between both of us, more of this is coming. And I pray the Lord will continue to support you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, he will support your political ambition, he will continue to provide for you. Amen. As long as you keep supporting the work of God, God will continue to support you. Hello, Jason, my dad is at it again. Can you believe he locked me in the room and took the keys along with him? I am so sorry, I will not be able to come along with you as planned. Please help me apologize to the guys. Well, that should not be a problem with the guys at all. Yeah, thank you. Please know that I love you so much and there is nothing my dad or anyone can do about it. Yeah, alright talk to you later okay? Alright dear, please I'll make it up to you. I love you, alright. Okay, bye. What's up, is Sarah not coming with us? Her dad again. Wait, what exactly is the problem of that man? I don't know, you should understand Ben, rich men and their problems. It's not good, if I were to be Sarah, I swear to God. No, a child of God doesn't swear, come on. I know a child of God should not swear, but then Sarah is grown and she should be allowed to make her choices. She has made her choice and her dad has no choice, come on, that's why we are Christians, we make decrees. That is why we make decrees, we declare and it will come to pass, let's get going, just say a word and the man will do well. So. So what? So, what next? You still want us to see, you are getting married very soon, the earlier you realize that. Me getting married has nothing to do with this, the earlier you realize that too. Could that be your girlfriend? She didn't tell me she's coming, you know what, you make it snappy in there and dress up, and I will let you know when the coast is clear. Yes, I am coming, you are welcome. Bro how far? Fine. Why did it take you so long before you opened the door? You're welcome, have your seat, the coast is clear. I hope it is not what I am thinking. You know what it is, so why drag it? Kyle, you brought in a strange woman knowing the fact that your wedding is around the corner. This guy, are you ready to get married at all? You disappoint me, why have you lowered your voice? Whoever cares to hear should hear. You're getting married soon, get that into your skull, what's wrong with you? Guys, I know you're saying all this because you love me, but I don't appreciate you trying to build me into what I am not. This is my lifestyle and it's not everyone that will be church boys like the two of you. Moreover, she knows that I'm getting married soon and she's fine with it. Who cares how she feels about it? Who cares, we're your friends, we are not happy with it, I'm sure your fiancé, Joyce would not be happy with this. You're not supposed to be happy with this at all. Please help me tell him. See, I want to take a leak. Go. Can I use your restroom? Yes. Hope you don't have any other babe inside that place. Just go. Honestly Kyle, you should not be doing this. Who is there? I'm coming. Why the look? Uncle Jason, it's nice meeting you. Kyle didn't tell me you'd be here. Actually, I did not call him before coming. I was very busy. It is well. How are you doing? I'm fine. You look good. Thank you. So how is Sarah doing? How is work too? She is fine, our fiancé. 
Thank you. The bride to be. You can say that again. Kyle, who is this lady that just walked out of the room? Okay. Actually, it's not Kyle. Okay. It's not me either. Okay. So. Then it's Joyce. Uncle Ben, you. What's going on? Leslie, please calm down. I can explain this to you, okay? Please, you need to listen to me. It's over. Calm down. We'll talk to her, please. Calm down. Leslie, please pick up my call. Auntie Leslie, you've been sulking all day and you've been starving yourself. Will you start to have sleepless nights because of a man? Stop crying. Just forget about Uncle Ben and move on with your life. Hi, Joy. Is she in? No. Joy, please, give me that chance to explain myself to Leslie. Joy, let him in. I tried calling you severally but you didn't pick up. I was here yesterday to explain myself but I was told you were not around. Are you sick? Why are you here? Leslie, what happened yesterday didn't actually happen. I mean, it happened but it wasn't me. It was only Kyle himself that came to the house with the lady. Jason only mentioned my name just to protect Kyle's wedding. Leslie, I need you to believe me. Sincerely, I'm being honest with you right now. I can't deceive you. When you are done, shut my door, and I don't want to ever set my eyes on you ever, because I am done. No Leslie please, don't do this. Leslie you know me very well that, I've never cheated on you before. Please don't do this to us. Leslie you're my source of joy, my entire life would be meaningless without you. Please. Excuse me. Now listen to me young lady, I know you must have learned some lessons now and I want you to get this into your skull, that I, Comrade Johnson, will not have the son of a nobody get married to my only daughter. Never. Dad, do you think you can run my life like one of your community projects? I'm a grown up lady for crying out loud dad, and I can make decisions myself. No, you will not make decisions that will dent my image as a public figure, I will not allow that. So this is all about you, all about your political ambitions and not my joy. Your joy is equally important and that is why I am saying you should get married to Michael, yes, the son of Chief Richard, talk of education, connection, finance, mention it. What else do you need? So dad, you think that money can actually buy my joy, my happiness. Tell me what, so are you saying it is lack of connection, no money, no education and being a son of nobody that will bring you joy and happiness? Is this what you are saying? Dad, Jason is not a nobody. Yes, his parents might not have it all. They're not a public figure. But Daddy, Jason is educated. He is comfortable. He is hardworking too, Dad. And he has a promising future. Please you will have to explain to him as I am telling you. Let him carry his promising future and his comfortability to go and marry a lady of his own caliber. I am your father and you must do whatever I say in this house. And that is final. I'm an adult dad, and I know what is best for me. Allow me do what is best for me dad. Look, if you think you are too big to obey my instructions, then you should find yourself another father. And if you think that you will run my life like those useless political parties of yours, then you should find yourself another daughter. You are very stupid, disobedient to parents. God, I'm sorry. I think I just took all of these things too far, but I'm tired, I've tried. Reverend, hello sir. Hello Sarah, how are you? Reverend, I'm not fine. Reverend I'm going through a lot right now. It is alright, stop crying, your dad told me everything and that's why I am calling you. What, he did? Yes, he did. You see Sarah, I want you to understand that your father is not wicked, okay. Whatsoever he's doing, He's doing because he loves you. If he really loves me, Reverend, he will allow me do what I want. This is what I feel God wants for me and that's why I'm staying on this. Reverend please help me. Yes, he should, but that's if what you are doing will not hurt you. I don't understand sir. He told me a lot of things, alright. So you need to seek the face of God, yes, you need to seek the face of God to know God's perfect will for your life. Especially when it comes to marital affair, and you never can tell, 
God can be using your dad to stop you from getting into an error or making some mistakes. Mistakes. Yes. Sarah, you need to take things calmly, okay? You don't need to rush, let God choose for you, so you need to pray, pray again and again and again, and whatever you see as regards this, come to me. Tell me about it, let me pray for you too, God does not frown at chastisement, and God can use your pastor or your parents to chastise you, even the Bible says that it is the child that the father loves that he chastises. All right. So when your father chastises you, don't just be angry but be calm, all right. It shall be well with you, okay. God bless you. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate this. Please my greetings to mommy. God bless you. Lifetime mistakes. What is happening to me? Are you sure you are not misleading this lady? How do you mean? Ever since you collected $10,000 from her father, I noticed that you have been biased for what the father says over the will of God. But you are here, you heard everything I told her, I was only counseling her as her pastor, that she should seek the face of God before she makes a decision as regards her marital life. Even when saying that, I noticed that the tune of your voice was suggesting something else, are you sure your conscience has not been bought without your knowledge? Does it look like my conscience has been bought? Look, this man makes it clear that the $10,000 has nothing to do with what I am doing now. He only told me to help him talk to his daughter. Really? What were you expecting him to say? Dear, I think it is better for us to return the $10,000. What? Don't worry, the Lord is going to take care of us and the church, no amount of money is worth trading our peace of mind and conscience for. Hello. How are you? Good. What happened? You sounded unhappy when you spoke to me on phone. I am sorry if it's about what my dad did. It's no problem, yes it's what your dad did, but there are other things involved. Other things? Talk to me, what is it? You are looking so worried. Sarah, I made a grievous mistake. Grievous mistake? Okay, so what mistake is that? I lied against Ben. Okay, I still don't get it. So we were at Kyle's place yesterday. Okay, Joyce called me that there was going to be a surprise get together. We didn't want to inform you guys because we had a plan, but my dad messed up the whole thing. So what about that? You know how carefree Kyle is? Yes. And how we keep preaching to him but he's still not listening. Okay so. That guy brought a lady who? What? He brought his lady home. Like he used to. Even though his wedding is just around the corner. That was why I lied, Joyce saw the lady coming out of Kyle's room. What? In order to save their wedding, I had to lie that it was Ben that brought the lady, little did I know that Leslie was right behind the door listening to everything. Oh my goodness, what? You shouldn't have, Jason you shouldn't have lied. I know right, I know, I only did that to save their wedding. So have they all settled all of this? I mean it's just a whole lot. Settled. That's just the bad thing here now, I just had a news that Leslie has broken a four years relationship with Ben. What? Leslie has broken up with Ben. You know what that means right? This is the height of it. I know, Leslie has been the only one except for Ben's younger sister, she has been there through thick and thin for them. Yes. Including times when Ben wanted to commit suicide, it was Leslie that helped out. I know. I'm just tired of all this. I know all the story behind this and I know this is going to be a lot for Ben at the moment and even Leslie. So Jason, what are you going to do now? I think I have to go see him. I think you should. I have to go see him to make things right. It is a lot. Okay my dear see you later. Yes, I am coming. How are you doing? I'm fine. Please is your brother in? Yes he is inside. Alright, can I see him? Sure, you can try. Alright. <laughs> ben, I, I have come to ask for forgiveness, I know I was wrong, but I was just trying to save our friend's marriage, I didn't know Leslie was listening all along, I regret. I regret every moment, please Ben, please find a place in your heart to forgive me, please. He has been like that since last night. He hasn't said anything, not even a word. He hasn't eaten anything, nothing at all, since last night. I feel ashamed of myself. No, you don't have to Mr. Jason. You did all you did to save your friend's marriage. Well no, I was still wrong. 
I'm just worried about my brother. I hope he doesn't hurt himself. I mean, life has been so unfair to us ever since we lost our parents 15 years ago. Nobody, no family was there for us, just the two of us, and this Leslie of a lady is the only one that happens to motivate him, I hope she reconsiders him. At least so that he can gather himself together and make a meaning out of his life. I hope so, Maya please keep an eye on him, and don't hesitate to let me know whenever you need help, okay? I promise I will not be far from you. Okay, I will, thank you so much for the visit. Maya, I'm so sorry, alright, I'll see you again. Okay, thank you so much. Can you hear yourself? You mean I should go and tell Joyce that what happened that day wasn't Ben but my own fault? Don't you know what is at stake? My wedding? I mean my wedding. And you know that both Leslie and my fiancé are close. Whose fault? Who caused this? No, tell me, who caused all of this? If you had not brought that lady, that so-called lady into your house, won't we have avoided all these? Now Ben is out there, Ben is out there all alone, paying the price for your sins, does that make sense at all? Life is a battleground, and it is the survival of the fittest. Come off it, Kyle come off it, what's this? I am disappointed in you, I am disappointed in you Kyle, after everything Ben has done for you as a friend. Is this all you're gonna say? Now I know, I know why the scripture says that bad company corrupts good manners. So I'm now the bad company. You know what I'm trying to do, I am protecting my relationship. You are protecting your relationship, then you should have protected your relationship by staying faithful to your woman, Kyle, you would have protected your relationship by staying faithful to your woman. And you won't tell me what to do. I know I can't tell you what to do, but if this is how you choose to live your life, then I'm afraid you have to excuse us, I don't know, today it's Ben's relationship, I don't know maybe tomorrow would be mine. Who invited you here? No one, you did not call anyone and that is why I'm about to take my leave, but listen carefully, I desire that you will reconsider your ways back to Jesus. Before it's too late, have a beautiful day. Please take your leave. Is it still the same matter? Auntie Sarah, why then are we Christians? The Bible says we should be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we should let our request be made known to God. Beatrice, I have prayed, I mean serious prayers, rolling on the floor, begging God to intervene, I mean what else? I heard you last night because your voice was so loud. Really? I'm so sorry. I never knew my voice was that loud, I was so burdened. You don't need to be sorry, you didn't disturb me, you only reminded me to pray. Beatrice, what else? I have done everything that I can think of, I mean I have prayed, I have fasted, I'm just tired, the whole thing is just, I don't know. Auntie Sarah, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, we should let our request made known to God, you have tried prayer, how about praising God? Praising God. Yes. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we exalt your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. We can't say thank you enough. Sarah, a song just came into my spirit and I want us to sing it together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored, so we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. How excellent is your name, O God. Yes, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O God. How excellent is your way, O Lord, we know your way is excellent and so we come in an excellent manner, how excellent is your name. He is Lord, Amen, he has risen from the dead he is Lord, every knee must bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is God. Great are you Lord, you are greatly to be praised, Father you reign, great are you Lord, you are greatly to be praised, Father you reign. Thank you sir, I have prayerfully considered this and I believe that, God will want me to go ahead with this relationship, of course I'm aware of all the challenges ahead and that's why we have printed the invitation card in faith. Yes, we don't have a date on it yet but we trust God, we believe God that one day, someday this will come to reality, we just want to act in faith sir. Is your father aware of this? My father is aware that I will get married one day. And does he know who you are planning to get married to? Young man, what is your name? My name is Jason sir. Jason, have you met with her father? 
Yes sir, but it didn't go well sir. Okay, so what's the plan? We are planning that we'll pick a Saturday, we'll come to church in our wedding attires, we'll just come to worship God, thank God in anticipation of the miracle we are expecting. Because we really believe God, we know that one day He will make everything work out well for us, and we'll get married, so we just want to come together and worship God in advance for this. I would like to have a word with him, so you will excuse us. All right, sir. Jason Wright. Yes, sir. Jason, sir. There are some questions I would like to ask you. Okay, sir. Welcome. How are you doing? Fine. Is he in the house? Well, he still hasn't come out. I am just so worried. He's been holding on to your photo. My photo? Yes, and I don't know why. I have come to apologize for what I did again. Ben, why do you have my picture on your wall? Well, I guess it is not a good time to talk, right? When are you getting married? It is well. Mr. Jason, please I really apologize for whatever he did. I am so sorry. Maya you don't have to, okay. I understand my friend is in a bad state right now. Anyway I'm meeting up with Leslie later today. I'm hoping she will reconsider my friend. No problem. Just keep me updated please. No problem, I will, I need to rush, I'll call you, take care of yourself. I will, thank you. Hi. Hi Auntie Sarah, bye. How did it go? He has my photo on his hand. Your photo? I think he's very bitter at this point. So, what do we do now? I will have a meeting with Leslie later today, I feel I should inform the police, just for my safety. Okay. Something is not clear with Ben's actions, something is not clear. When did you get out of bed? Why are you not sleeping? Darling, I couldn't sleep. It's like there is fire on the mountain. I have lost my rest. I don't know why. My mind is disturbed. I told you already not to get yourself caught up in this web. Comrade Johnson does not have the fear of God. He can do an undo. But what do you suggest I do? You have to return his $10,000. What? Is there no other way? I know we have a lot of things we want to use the money for, the church extension and all, but not this kind of money, return his money, we need our peace of mind. Hello sir, yeah, good afternoon sir, how is the family and business? Yes, quick one, I would like to know when you will be around at home. Because I really need to see you. What's happening? I'm not available at the moment. I'm out of town for a meeting with some foreign shareholders. Hope all is well. Yeah, all is well. I just kind of wish we could talk. I just want to see you, so I would like to know when you'll be at home. That will be about two weeks from now. Two weeks from now. Are you aware of Sarah's intention to? Intention to the what? Hello Reverend, are you still there? Yes. I think it's better you come around so we can talk face to face, have a good day sir. Leslie, it was all my fault, Ben is a devoted child of God, I have never seen him cheat before and I'm not sure he's going to start that please. Just find a place in your heart to forgive him, ever since you said you were not interested again, he has been messed up, I don't think he will ever get over it if you guys don't come together. Please. Leslie you know this, you know he lost his parents at a very young age, accompanied with this breakup, I'm just afraid he will hurt himself. He should not go and hurt himself, what will become of his only sister if he should do that? That's it. What do you now want me to do? Please, Leslie it's not as if I am trying to persuade you, I just want you to find a place in your heart to reconsider all of this, please. You want me to reconsider this? Yes. Babe. You're here. Michael, this is Jason, Ben's friend. Jason, this is my fiancé. Fiancé. Of course, as you can see, I have moved on. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hello, any updates? I'm sorry, Leslie has moved on. Oh my goodness, God what is this? God what did we do to deserve this? Why? It was all my fault, Ben is a devoted child of God, I have never seen him cheat and I'm not sure he's going to start that please. Just find a place in your heart to forgive him. 
And who is that idiot you're talking with? Michael, come on, he's not an idiot, that is Jason, Ben's friend. So you're calling me an idiot, right? Because I called him an idiot. I cannot call you an idiot. You cannot call me an idiot, will you shut your mouth? Forgiveness, sir, I think we have treated this topic before. I know, I know we have, but unfortunately you have not passed, so we have to revisit it until you have passed, in this school, if you have not passed a topic. You know you cannot proceed to another, right? So let's get to work. Jesus. Oh my god, big bro. I saw Jesus, he taught me forgiveness. I'm sorry, I am wrong, I am so wrong, Maya I'm sorry. Thank God, it's so good to have you back. Thank you so much, thank you for standing by me. Big bro, that's the least I can do, if I don't, who else will? You know it's just the two of us, there's no family, no one to support us, it's just the two of us. But then, Jesus has always been there for us, hope you know that. Yes, he has been our rock and pillar, yeah. But big bro, now that you are out, what's next? I'm very sorry Leslie, actually I was innocent. I know you are and I'm sorry for causing you pain and for breaking us. But you left me for another man, you were gone. Actually I was, but now I'm back, I'm back to God's will for my life, I'm back to my peace, I want you to find a place in your heart to forgive me. Who am I not to forgive you? You see Leslie, I met with Jesus, and he taught me forgiveness, the truth is that I have forgiven you and I have forgiven every other person that offended me. Including Jason. Jason. Yes. So that makes it a double start for Jason. Double start? Yes. How do you mean? You said you have forgiven him. Yes. So that makes it a second start for him. Okay, so what's the first? Jason is getting married tomorrow. Jason. Yes. Jason is getting married. Something like a faith wedding. Ben. Ben. Yes. Is everything okay? Yes, I'm fine. Ben, you promised you've forgiven them. Yes. You've forgiven Jason. I have nothing against Jason. Are you sure, Ben, you have forgiven them? I'm fine, it's fine, so where are we off to? Is this how you were going to dance for our wedding, as for me I will dance very well to the glory of God. What's going on? What's happening here? Now come with me or I will shoot your boyfriend now. Please don't shoot him, I will follow you. Now, you close your eyes and start praying, or I will blow your brain out. Start praying for your separation, pray that the lady will never again like you. I asked you to be praying and your eyes are still open. You want me to blow your brain out. Hello police. You have just five minutes to talk, so make it quick. Okay sir. I warned you Ben, I told you to let him be, I thought you meant it when you said you forgive them. I did. Little did I know that, there is still bitterness in your heart. Leslie, no. Is this the man I want to spend the rest of my life with? Please. I doubt it. Brother Jason please, please I'm begging you, my brother cannot kidnap anybody, he cannot kidnap anything, he cannot do it please. Please I'm begging you. Maya listen to me, listen and listen clearly, he has not seen anything, tell your brother if you know what is good for him, he should release my fiancé or else. He is your friend also, you know what he can do and what he cannot do, you know he cannot do anything like that, he cannot kidnap, it's not possible, he is a child of God. He's gentle, he's a good man, he's my brother. Keep quiet, the next time I see you here telling me this nonsense, you'll see what I will do. Get out of this place, get out of my house. Please I beg you in the name of God. Maya, get out of this place. Reverend, I trusted you, I committed my daughter into your hands thinking things would get better. Little did I know that it would get worse with you. I'm more than disappointed in you. 
I tried my best but I couldn't have forced her. Your best is not good enough, you ruined everything. Calm down, this is a church, calm down. I am not calming down, you can't tell me to calm down, just pray, just pray that I find favor with Chief and Michael, else. My regards to Sarah. Did you even know the price I paid to release her? Did you? I'm sure you don't, you can as well go and inform the police and the whole world that a comrade Johnson kidnapped my daughter. But I want you to know you are a part of all of this, because you were paid handsomely, good day. Sarah, I warned you. You warned me about what? You warned me that I should not marry the man that I love, the man that I know is the will of God for my life. Daddy, make this make sense to me. Clear it out. I, Comrade Johnson, am your father. I know what is good and best for you. You don't, Dad. You don't know what is good or best for me. You only know what is good for yourself. That is why you insist that I marry that boy. Just because of your selfish interest. You know I regret having you as my daughter. And I regret having you as my... Go on, just pray. Pray that this goes well with Chief and his son, else you will see. Don't do this to me again. Open the door. Why is Dad doing this to me? He wants me to keep quiet or I return the $10,000 he has given us in the church. I have told you several times before that this man does not have the fear of God, and it is risky collecting money from such a man. How was I supposed to know? What are we going to do now? Exactly what he wants, we will do exactly what he wants. Which is... Good day, officer. Yes, young lady. How may I help you? Officer, please have come to see my brother. And which of the criminals is your brother? No, my brother is not a criminal, please. His name is Brother Ben Kent. Ben Kent, the kidnapper. My brother is not a kidnapper, please. Officer, that's why I came. He cannot do it. He is innocent. Please help us. Help me, please. Okay, so what do you want me to do? How do you want me to help you? So I should release him so that he can kidnap more people and then kidnap me too. Young lady, what I would advise you to do is that, get a very competent lawyer, not just any kind of lawyer, get a very competent lawyer, a brilliant one. Officer, it's because you don't know him. I know him. He is my brother. He cannot even chase a rat. He cannot even kill a fly. Really? I know him very well. He's a child of God. He is very gentle, he cannot kidnap anybody officer, please help him, help us. Young lady, you look like an accomplice. Not so, you just said you do things together, you kidnap together, you kidnap that lady together. Officer Marcus. I will just go, I will come back later, I am so sorry. I would have arrested you if not because you're a petty lady, nonsense. God why? Why is all this happening to us? Why? What have we done wrong? What have we done to deserve this? Why the pain, sorrow, sadness? What have we done? Have we committed any sin? Is it our sin or the sin of our parents? Even if we have committed any sin, don't you forgive sins anymore? God I am tired. I am dying God. I am tired. I have tried. I am weary. I am dying. What is the essence of life? A life of pain, sorrow and bitterness. Anybody there, please open the door. Auntie Sarah, I'm here. Beatrice please can you help me open the door? The key is not with me, Dad has taken it away. That's fine, please help me check for the spare key. Dad has taken it away. The spare key? Yes. Oh my goodness, I need to get out of here. Beatrice please help me to call Jason. Please help me tell him what is happening, that's why I have not been able to call him. I have not been able to come out, please help me call him. Daddy seized my phone, he collected it yesterday ma. Why is daddy doing this to me? Why does he want to frustrate me? What am I going to do now? I can't do anything, I can't go out, God why is this happening to me? Why does dad want me to trade my joy for his political ambition? Why? Auntie Sarah, stop crying please. There is something we can do. Beatrice thank you. I have always known you are a lifesaver. Thank you so much. Please I need to get out of here. What can we do? We can pray. There is nothing God cannot do. Auntie Sarah, please place your hands on the door. Are you with me? 
I'm with you Beatrice. I will place mine here, let's take this song together, Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Pastors, thank you for waiting behind, I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting in church even after the service, so the reason we are here is to have a brief meeting as regards the debt that the church has found herself. Of course we know Comrade Johnson, and of course we know he is presently mounting pressure on the church to cough out the money that he willingly donated towards the church building project. Now that the church is standing, the project is completed, he wants us to give him back every penny that he has spent on this project, and of course he has not stopped sending text messages, people, lawyers, calls, asking that we give him back his money. So that is why I want us to talk about it, what should we do? Dominion greetings to my fellow pastors, my reverend, thank you for this opportunity, I have just a few suggestions as regards to this matter, no one can stop the church. Yes. Because our God is able to do exceedingly above all we think or ask, so my own opinion is that, I feel it's best for us now to sell the landed property, whatever money we can raise within ourselves should be used to get a rented apartment, so that the church can keep moving. So far our God is a faithful God, he is our provider, no one can hold God to ransom not to talk of stepping the church down, so let's sell the landed property then keep the church rolling. That is in my own view. Do we have any counter opinion? I think that is the best option we have now. All right, so now that we have an agreement, when I was praying about it, I had the same conviction that we should sell this and move to a rented apartment. Now that we have an agreement, it is the way to go, we are going to call for another meeting and inform the committee of elders about it, and then we move from there. Thank you so much pastors for your time, thank you for your contributions, I really appreciate it, so we are going to say the grace now because I promise this was going to be brief, so that we can continue with other things. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. If I had known that you were not trustworthy, I would not have asked Michael to come all the way from the state, that innocent boy traveled that distance to come and marry your daughter. It's not as if your daughter is special, I just wanted him to marry your daughter to help your political career. My chief, I'm so sorry, I tried my best, I tried, I don't just know how it all ended up this way, I am sorry. If you cannot control your daughter, how do you want to control a constituency? Anyway my son said he's no longer interested in your daughter, and I hope you know what that means to your ambition of becoming a senator. No my chief, we can, please. Get out, please leave me alone. Comrade, I don't want to be a party to the suffering of an innocent boy, of course I know what you did to him and my conscience is not at rest, I will not pretend I don't know what you did. So I will advise you comrade, to set the innocent boy free and let him go to his family, he knows nothing about what he is suffering for, and as for your daughter, Sarah, let the girl marry whomever she wants to marry. And in this bag that I am holding is the money I have received from you, the one given to me and the one given to the church, summing up to $25,000, I'm bringing them back to you, thank you so much. And I need to let you know that God has not rejected your money, but he is more interested in your soul, have a great day. Please, I'm ready. Ready? Ready for what? Reverend, I've made several mistakes in the past, I have broken my daughter Sarah so much, I have broken her just because of my selfish ambition, I have chosen my political career over and above the joy of my only daughter. I almost ruined her life, I almost destroyed her future, I believe the mercy of God didn't allow me, Reverend I need a power that will stop me from this rat race, I think I need Jesus, Reverend please lead me to Jesus. Yes comrade, I am willing to lead you to Jesus, and yes you need him in your life, so please you can close your eyes and say this after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Just thank your stars that comrade called for your release, else you will grow gray hair here, and next time, be mindful of going to places you are invited to, do you hear me? Yes sir. You can leave this place now. Thank you sir. Mr. John. Neighbor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, how is she? How is who? Who are you talking about? So you have not heard. Your sister. Heard what? Joy. What happened to my sister? She poisoned herself and the lady called Leslie came in and took her to the hospital. Sorry. Hello Leslie. What happened to my sister? Which hospital? Sarah my daughter. I'm so sorry for the way I have treated you in the past. I know I have done so many wrong things in the past to you. But I'm sorry. I was blind to the truth. But now I can see. 
Please find a place in your heart to forgive me, please. Daddy, why are you saying all these things now? I know I have hurt you, I have wronged you, please I just need your forgiveness, please forgive me. It's only Jesus that can forgive you dad. Reverend led me to Christ, I've surrendered my life to Jesus. Really? You have given your life to Christ? Exactly. Daddy, this sounds like a dream. It's not a dream, this is reality my daughter, Sarah, I have another surprise for you. What? Jason, how did this happen? Well, Daddy called me and explained everything to me, he said we should start planning our wedding. We are going to plan our wedding. Daddy thank you so much. You are having your wedding with this young handsome gentleman and I promise you 100% support, financially, emotionally and spiritually. Thank you so much Daddy. Jason, you need to go and ask for forgiveness from your friend, Ben, he needs to forgive you, that young man is innocent. Yes I will. I'm sorry for everything I put us through, and I must thank you for standing by me, I thank you for rescuing my sister, you know you are a lifesaver right? I love you so much. That is so cute. I am also sorry for not believing you, I was naive, but thank god we're back together and we are better and stronger. Guys, all these boring things that you guys are doing is none of my business. Just go ahead and get married, get married. Will you shut up there and mind your business? Common, don't shut her up, is she not saying the truth? And what truth is she saying? When will you put a ring on my finger? Is this a setup by you ladies or what? <laughs> Kyle, how are you doing? Why are you looking this way? His face is kind of gloomy, or is it just me? Is it the wedding plan that is overwhelming for you? What is wrong? What is happening Kyle? There will be no wedding. Why? Did Joyce call off the wedding? I am a cheat all along. Joyce never deserved what I have done to her. I messed up. I messed up real big. It's okay. Take a look at you guys. You guys are doing well and I believe it's because of your relationship with your Jesus. Can you guys lead me to this Jesus? I want to know him, right now I'm a mess. I want him to change me, I want him to help me. Uncle Kyle, I need you to know that there is no mess that God cannot fix, he can turn your mess into a message. Let's just say a word of prayer. <laughs> 